Chapter 2, The Purloined Prototype I shoved my VR headset and controller into my backpack. I reached over to Noah's desk and scooped up his gear as well. I put his equipment inside his pack as the classroom began to fill. Mr. Jenkins, our algebra teacher, wasn't the strictest in the school, but if Noah came back late, it wouldn't go well having his desk littered with VR gear. Where's Noah? Amy Shu asked as she sat at the desk behind his. He has two minutes and twelve seconds before the bell rings. Amy didn't look at the clock when she said this. Not only does she have a photographic memory, but also an internal clock that I would stack up against any atomic clock in the world. He ran to the bathroom, I replied. I thought about sparing Amy the gory details and my best bud's honor, but Amy was our close friend. I leaned over and added, He got sick from our VR drone footage. I think he's yakking his guts out. Amy's eyes widened in shock. Then she burst into laughter. Her hand shot to her mouth when a small snort escaped. Even though Amy had been friends with us since the beginning of the school year, she still acted a little shy. It was always fun cracking her up. Ew, said Sam's voice behind me. She plopped down at her desk and turned to Amy, who blushed red. Not the snort, Amy, the yakking part. Samantha Watson was the last member of the formidable foursome, as my dad calls us. Probably the smartest student in the entire school. Sam has never let the G word, genius, go to her head. I quickly recapped our morning drone test and near escape from Davenport and the dreaded Coley bird. That's your prototype for this month's convention, asked Amy. She chewed on her lower lip. Can I see it? It is, and I'd love to show you, I replied, but I had to pa park it out of sight for now. I'll have to get it after class. Mr. Edge, our engineering teacher, holds a monthly showcase he calls the Invention Connection, a chance for students to show off their inventing skills. It's pretty informal. We just meet in the cafeteria during lunch, but it's really cool to see all the creative inventions students have been building on the side. What about you, Amy? asked Sam. Are you going to try this month? Same answer as last month, Amy, she replied, running a hand through her short brown hair. Not going to happen. Sam actually received a scholarship to the Academy for an invention, and it was a big one. She was interviewed on local news channels and even a few national ones. It had something to do with water source engineering. She has always been vague on how it works, since the rights were bought by a company that's currently testing it in a drought-prone nation in Africa. Therefore, Sam has consistently avoided Entering the invention connections, she thinks there's too much pressure to top herself. Amy glanced at Noah's desk and then up and to the right. I knew this looked well. It was as if she was looking at her imaginary internal clock. Noah has 47 seconds left or he's going to be tardy. I didn't have to check my watch to know that she was a spot on. Luckily, Noah entered the classroom. His face was no longer pale and his green tint was almost gone. He sighed as he slid into his desk. Hey, Amy, he said with a nod. Then he offered a fist bump to Sam. What's up, W.G.? Sam pushed his fist away. I warned you about that. Since Sam was somewhat of a celebrity, some of the students nicknamed her Water Girl. Sam hated that name, so naturally, as her good friends, we had to give her grief about it sometimes. Sam pushed her glasses up her nose and leaned closer to him, smirking. I'm going to start calling you H.B. H.B., Noah asked. What does that stand for? Sam's smirk turned into a full-blown grin. Hurl boy! Amy covered her mouth and giggled. Noah's eyes widened as he rounded on me. Dude, I can't believe you told them. I shrugged. What are friends for? Amy dug into her backpack and rattled through its contents. She finally pulled out a small tin box and handed it to Noah. Here, have a mint. Amy's backpack was her version of Batman's utility belt. Thank you, Amy. Noah popped one into his mouth and glared at me. That's what friends are for. Just then the bell rang. The murmured con conversations of the rest of the students faded. Soon there was a class of eager students sitting at their desks, ready to learn algebra. There was just one problem. No teacher. Where's Mr. Jenkins? asked Noah. 
I shrugged my shoulders. The rest of the class looked at one another in uncertainty. After a minute of confused silence, the door opened. A young woman entered with a book and several folders clutched to her chest. She wore thick frame glasses and her dark hair was pulled up in a small bun. Sorry I'm late, she said. She rushed to the head of the class and dropped the folders into Mr. Jenkins' desk. I'm Miss Talbot, your substitute today. What happened to Mr. Jenkins, asked Maggie Ortiz. Miss Talbot sighed and dropped into Mr. Jenkins' chair. He's out sick, I'm afraid. She pointed to the folders on the desk, and he was kind enough to give me plenty of material to work with. She removed her glasses and rubbed the bridge of her nose. However, since I was called in at the last minute and haven't had a chance to get up to speed, and since I expect him back tomorrow, we're going to do something a little different. The students glanced around with puzzled expressions. Meanwhile, Miss Talbot flipped through the file folders. If I can just find his login info, she muttered. She finally pulled out a scrap of paper and held it up to her glasses to read it. Then she carefully typed the information into Mr. Jenkins' computer. Now, I don't know if there's an exciting documentary about algebra out there, she asked. She said, but I know something that should entertain you little geniuses. Miss Talbot tapped a few more keys and a video streaming web page appeared on the classroom's main board. She selected one of the videos and it began to play. Someone get the lights, please, she said. Terry Stevenson got up from the back row and switched off the classroom lights. The video's title screamed appeared. The 10 most notorious hackers in history, Sam read. Cool, said Noah. I've seen this one. He put his head on his desk. Total nap time. Who could blame him? He had just been sick after all. Besides, Noah probably knew every famous hacker by heart. He was a huge programming geek. The documentary was interesting. It began with one of the first hackers ever, John Draper, who was nicknamed Captain Crunch. He was the guy who used the toy whistle from a box of Captain Crunch cereal to hack the telephone system. The video went on to list other famous hackers. Some of them hacked into NASA looking for UFO evidence. Others had hacked into major corporations stealing credit card information. The FBI had caught most of them. Some of them had even been convinced to use their skills for good. They called themselves white hat hackers. However, a couple of them were still at large. Hacking and programming have never really been my thing, so I spent most of the time sketching out another drone design. Don't get me wrong, I'm a decent programmer, enough to get good grades in computer language classes, but I've never had the passion or talent for it like Noah has. I felt a nudge on my back. Who does that guy look like, Sam whispered. I looked up at the video and saw a black and white photograph of a man with light hair and thick sideburns. I shrugged. I don't know. Elvis? Sam nudged me harder. No, doesn't that look like Mr. Conway? Mr. Conway was the school's custodian. He was much older than the man in the photograph, had gray hair, and didn't have sideburns. He did have a similar pointed nose as well as a stocky frame. It was hard to tell since the photograph showed the man in profile and he wore lightly tinted glasses, sunglasses. I can see the resemblance, I said, kinda. I totally see it, whispered Amy. The video went on to identify the hacker only by his online username, SH4DOWH4WK. He did that weird programming thing where he replaced one of the letters with numbers. Shadowhawk's true identity was never discovered since he was never caught. He supposedly hacked into several military and government agency servers. If Shadowhawk is still on the FBI's most wanted list, I bet there's a big reward for his capture, said Sam. When Shadowhawk's photo came up on the video again, Amy gently nudged Noah. What? asked a groggy Noah. Amy pointed at the screen. Doesn't that look like Mr. Conway, she whispered. Noah squinted at the video. Maybe. When he was younger, he grinned. Check out those sideburns. Sam and Amy think Mr. Conway is some fugitive hacker, I whispered. Sam was taken aback. What? No, not Mr. Conway. I like him. He nudged me. Remember that time he came up with a perfect solvent for our, uh, mishap? Of course I remembered. The entire school remembered how an automated street painter went off during transport. Noah and I, along with three innocent bystanders and three square, 
Square meters of school hallway were blasted with the soothing shade of bright safety orange. Lucky for us, Mr. Conway had mixed a cleaner that removed the orange paint without damaging school property. Our prototype didn't make it to the convention that month. That means he's smart, Sam concluded. That doesn't mean he wasn't a hacker when he was younger. Noah looked back at the video. Really? Nah, can't be. The video moved on to the next famous hacker, and we continued to bicker quietly until we were shushed by Mrs. Talbot. We went back to watching the video while she went back to typing on Mr. Junkett's computer. Sam's theory didn't really surprise me. She was something of an amateur conspir conspiracy theorist. The four of us would often have discussions about the existence of Bigfoot or captured aliens at Area 51. Sam would always take the side of the implausible. As intelligent as she was, she felt it was more fun believing in fantastic things and, and then theorizing about the science of how they could exist. Honestly, she, could get a, she got a little carried away sometimes. The video ended just before the bell rang. I packed my backpack so I could be the first one out. What's the hurry, Tom? asked Sam. I have to grab the drone before someone finds it, I replied. You need help? asked Noah. I shook my head. It's on my way. You should be okay, said Noah. Mrs. Gaines usually has the class cleaning beakers and putting away chemicals well into the break. He was right. I should be able to work in the doorway without being run over by escaping students. That used to drive me nuts, Amy shook her head. Always threw me off schedule. When the bell rang, I was the first one out the door. I jogged down the highway and raced up the steps. The halls would fill quickly, and I still didn't know how I was going to get the drone off the ceiling tiles. I might have to borrow a stool from the chemistry lab. Actually, I would probably have to haul the stool through a rush of students and then have someone keep people from coming out of the class while I climbed up to get the drone. It would be easier if I got there before the next group of kids were filing into the classroom, too. I made it to the top of the stairs and headed toward the chem lab. I got to the doorway, looked up, and the drone was gone.